Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Vacuum Transport Seminar. Um, we are very happy to welcome all of you uh, in the name of all the organizations. Um, I'm very happy to welcome today's um, speaker, who is uh, Dr. Diego Politano. He is the Managing Director of Hasselrail AG. Hasselrail is the world's leading supplier of innovative onboard electronics, sensors, display software, and data management solutions for the railway industry. It's a, the company is located in Switzerland and Hasselrail is a very supportive sponsor and partner of Swiss Loop since a couple of years now. And we're very happy to welcome Diego today as our speaker. And he's talking about touristical data recording, meaning we probably already know it from the aviation industry or also railway industry that it's very important to, to collect the data in case of an accident. And as we can imagine, this will also be very important then for Hyperloop applications in the future. So he will talk about today, he will talk about the applications that already exist in the railway industry and possible gaps that need to be filled and closed in the future. So thank you very much, Diego, for the participation and the contribution to our seminar. And I will head over to you in a minute. And before I would quickly remind the audience that we use this tool called slido.com where uh, you can post your questions um, during the lecture and then afterwards we can uh, forward them to Diego and he will be happy to answer them at the end. I will put all the details into the chat. So now thank you very much Diego for, for uh, your contribution and um, please the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Natalie, and thank you to all to be here tonight. It's a pleasure to be able to present uh, this uh, interesting uh, topic uh, to the to the audience. Uh, I think I will start. Uh, you have already presented myself. Uh, a couple of words about myself. Uh, I am the managing director of uh, Hazarail, as you said. Hazarail is located uh, in Bern and Turkey. We have 320 employees worldwide. Uh, we are part of the Session Hazard Group. Uh, uh, to my person, uh, I'm an alumnus of the ETH at Zurich, so I was uh, studying electrical engineering and I'd made also my PhD at the Institute for Ursprungstechnik uh, in, uh, in Zurich at the Walterstrasse. Um, we develop and uh, deliver onboard electronics components for the railway market. Uh, we are world leader in the tachymetry, data recording and processing and the data processing uh, in for railway market. Uh, applications uh, and we have a wide range of products uh, not only the juridical uh, data recorder but also uh, we are uh, quite active in other uh, systems uh, like uh, the energy metering system hmi speed sense and tachymetry train communication gateways and other uh, components one can see on the picture on the left uh, a little bit uh, an overview about uh, uh, components uh, and systems that uh, we deliver to the railway market and we are present uh, in um, close to every train that uh, is uh, running around the world. Um, on the left, on the right, uh, uh, I've shown uh, where we are located. So we are located uh, nearly everywhere in the world. We are offices distributed over the, the globe and uh, our market uh, is uh, basically all the, uh, all the integrators and uh, in the world so it's a very interesting uh, very interesting market and uh, we are present in the market uh, since more than 100 uh, years so we have quite a huge uh, experience in the market now uh, the juridical data recorder in the railway what uh, we can see here is unfortunately an accident that happened uh, in uh, Santiago de Compostela or close to Santiago de Compostela it was a high speed trains of railway uh, many of you might remember that uh, that was a very tragic accident uh, in July 2020, 2013, and one of our uh, juridical data recorder was uh, on board. So uh, thanks to the data that uh, were on the juridical data recorder, we were able to reconstruct to reconstruct the, the accident. Uh, uh, so uh, with the analysis of the data, it was possible to find out that uh, uh, the accident uh, was uh, uh, caused 
by uh, an issue on the on the on the line so the the driver was uh, basically not uh, not knowing exactly where he was on the track and I was entering then in a in a in a section and uh, finally into a curve uh, with a speed that was uh, twice the speed that uh, he should uh, have at that moment and that uh, was causing a derailment uh, it was a very very bad tragedy a lot of people got uh, got uh, hit by this uh, by this uh, accident and uh, it was uh, a very uh, tragic uh, accident uh, in uh, in spain so at that point uh, it was uh, it was shown again the importance to have uh, the information on the trains uh, uh, and uh, our technology uh, was uh, uh, very helpful to find out uh, uh, what happened during uh, this uh, this accident the technology uh, that is on the trains uh, we can see on the on the bottom on the left uh, is uh, is uh, we call it teloc uh, is our brand it's an event recorder it uh, is a is an onboard computer including uh, a crash protected memory the crash protected memory is uh, uh, made in a way that is uh, withstanding the crashes and also the fire and uh, the very harsh condition that uh, are happening during uh, uh, such an accident and the data that are stored on the on the crash protected memory are then uh, evaluated and assessed by uh, the experts that are able to uh, reconstruct uh, what happened on the trains it all depends on what which kind of data are stored on the trains uh, and uh, it's possible to store nearly everything what uh, is present on the train so uh, the the juridic uh, the juridical data recorder in the railway is uh, is uh, defined uh, in different norms all over the places uh, of, uh, showing here the the most uh, the most uh, important ones uh, maybe the most important is the uh, TSI uh, which is the technical specification for interoperability that has been defined in Europe uh, to make sure that uh, uh, the the, the uh, the, the technical uh, uh, solutions that are used uh, in the trains, uh, not only for the for the uh, data recorder, but for every other uh, electronic component on the train, are operating in the quite complex uh, uh, railway system in Europe, where we have uh, uh, more than 20 nations that are interconnected, and the trains are operating between the countries. And uh, maybe the most of you are too young to remember that that, uh, that uh, formerly when uh, a train came to the border uh, there was a change of a locomotive uh, and then uh, the train could uh, continue today the locomotives uh, or the trains are operating over the, the, the borders without any issues but to, re to reach this condition uh, a lot of uh, norms uh, and regulations uh, have been uh, put in place and uh, one can see here on the screen uh, the ones that are regulating uh, uh, the interoperability and also the, the solution for the data recorder. So the data recorder is uh, defined uh, into the TSI uh, CCS uh, as well as OPE. In, uh, in the UK, there is another norm that is defining uh, the boundaries of uh, the data recording. In the US, uh, there is another norm and in Japan, another one, uh, another one as well. But the TSI norm is the one that that is uh, mostly used, uh, for example, also for China and India, even if it is an European norm. So uh, the basis uh, behind the, 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 the juridical data recorder is that uh, identifying and recording the data in a uh, given and a standardized way, it is possible to uh, identify the causes of an accident, but also uh, the evaluation of uh, what happens during an accident uh, is also used to prevent uh, the accidents in the future. So this is flowing back into the safety management in uh, the railway uh, to make sure that uh, in case uh, something needs to be improved, uh, some technical solution needs to be uh, done in a different way or even like for the example of the train in Spain, uh, something needs to be changed in the infrastructure. This is uh, changing the infrastructure to avoid uh, to have a new uh, a next accident or even if possible to prevent an accident uh, because uh, this information is already evaluated before the accident is happening. Now, due to the fact that uh, the, uh, the data are recorded uh, on the train for juridical uh, uh, reasons. Uh, uh, many train builders and also operators have uh, started to use the data 
uh, also for other for other topics, not only for the uh, prevention of accidents or for the uh, for the for the evaluation of accidents. Uh, so today, the data recorder is not anymore a simple juridical uh, device, uh, but is uh, becoming a collector of the data that are on the train. And data are today uh, quite an important uh, good. So the evaluation of the data is allowing uh, the uh, the producer of the trains, uh, but also then the operator of the train, to optimize uh, the um, the fleet. Uh, uh, the fleet uh, management of their uh, of their trains. So what is important and what uh, uh, is now happening in the market is that uh, the data are not only stored uh, on board, but they are also uh, sent to ground in order to be further uh, further uh, transformed and also further processed outside the train. And uh, this is also technology that as a rail has uh, developed. Uh, and uh, today uh, we are able to uh, with our tools that are uh, evaluating the data uh, where also uh, some uh, some uh, artificial intelligence process uh, pro processes uh, and uh, and data management processes are uh, uh, implemented we are able to uh, collect and also process and optimize uh, the uh, the usage of the trains finally so all these uh, uh, capabilities, uh, we uh, are convinced that uh, will enter into the future application and therefore I now have some, uh, okay. So we are convinced that uh, uh, what is happening currently in the railway business uh, will also be applied in the future into the vacuum transport. Uh, why I'm saying that? I'm saying that because uh, one of the big difference between uh, the Hyperloop transportation system and the current uh, and the current uh, railway system is the speed. But if you look into the speed, uh, the high speed trains currently uh, operating uh, in Europe, uh, in China, and in other countries in the world uh, are operating up to 350 kilometers per hour. But we have already today maglev operation, operating trains uh, that uh, are able to operate at 600 kilometers per hour. So last year, uh, Chinese producer CRRC has presented uh, a maglev uh, train uh, which uh, has uh, operating speed of 600 kilometers per hour. So if we look into the speed, we are coming closer to the uh, to the planet uh, up to 1,000 kilometers per hour of uh, the vacuum transport of the Hyperloop. And the second uh, uh, thing uh, where we, we think that there is a lot of uh, commonality is the fact that uh, the Hyperloop transportation plans to levitate uh, uh, something that uh, currently the conventional railway is not doing, but I go back to the maglev trains, they are levitating also uh, with magnetic levitation. So also there we have a lot of commonalities. The third uh, commonality is uh, also uh, related to the infrastructure is uh, that the vacuum transport is uh, or will operate into tubes. Uh, today, the conventional railway is outdoor, but the metro are operating in tunnels and we have uh, some metro systems uh, where the tunnels are very very small and then the last point where there is a lot of commonality is that uh, the vacuum transportation plans to operate in uh, automatic train operation today the railways uh, the railway the conventional railway is operated still with train drivers but more and more applications are moving into automatic train operation we have this uh, already implemented in metro in automatic people movers uh, but also in trains uh, where the applications uh, of the auto uh, of the ATO is becoming a reality. So the conclusion is that uh, the players that are acting today in the conventional train business can uh, strongly contribute to the development of the vacuum transportation technology. So it is a new technology. There will be new players uh, in the in this uh, in this field, but uh, the experience of uh, more than hundred years uh, in uh, the railway. Uh, for the, the, the companies that uh, will be fast enough and also will be uh, flexible enough to enter this new, uh, this new market 
is, uh, in my view, the key uh, for the success of the future of this uh, of this uh, uh, of this technology. Also, because uh, all the mistakes that have been done in the past by the conventional railway uh, should not be repeated uh, when it comes to uh, to the new uh, to the new train system or to the new transportation system. Now, if we enter into the challenges that uh, one can see already today compared to what uh, is the conventional uh, uh, train or uh, transportation system on the railway and uh, the, 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 the future challenges that the new transportation system uh, will uh, bring with it. Uh, I've tried to highlight uh, some of the points and there will be many more, but uh, this is some of the points that uh, we need to look at and we might uh, discuss tonight but also will be the big challenges for the future when it comes to a commercial uh, uh, a commercial rollout uh, of uh, of hyperloop so one of the points is the cpm the cpm today is designed for crashes uh, in trains uh, uh, the, like the ones that I have, uh, the, that I have uh, uh, shown before. So it's trains with uh, speed up to 350 kilometers per hour, some cases higher, but uh, today TSI is covering up to speed of uh, 350 kilometers per hour. So what now we need to check and understand is if the current technology that is used for the crash protected memory will be able to withstand uh, the vibrations, but in particular the crashes at a speed of uh, uh, 1000 kilometers per hour, uh, whatever the crash could be. The second aspect there is also what is happening in case of a crash. So today there is fire, today there is uh, explosions uh, maybe for uh, in situation where we have uh, uh, some diesel. Tomorrow there will be in the railway, there will be hydrogen in the play in the game, there will be batteries in the game, but uh, what is happening into a tube uh, uh, into a tube by in an hyperloop application. This is something that needs to be investigated and needs to be uh, checked to make sure that uh, the crash protected memory is all able to withstand these uh, crashes in this uh, uh, in this very harsh environment. The second very important aspect is the electromagnetic compatibility. We we are using uh, currently some uh, linear motors uh, with quite high uh, uh, emission of uh, of uh, of uh, magnetic fields. So this is something that needs to be checked in detail to make sure that uh, uh, we do not have any influence into the technology of uh, the data the data storage uh, on the event recorder because the situation the, the conditions that we will have uh, into an hyperloop tomorrow uh, might be. Uh, very different to the ones that uh, we have today into the into the trains. So this is something that needs to be also checked in detail when it will come to uh, to a commercial operation on Hyperloop. The next one is the cooling mechanism. Uh, the very interesting, I would say, situation in a tube uh, in a semi vacuum uh, will be a challenge for the for the heat uh, management. So what is going to happen? with the heat that is produced by 30 people into, uh, into a capsula that uh, is operating into, into, uh, uh, into vacuum and also with, uh, with the, the traction system that is also creating some heat. So this is something that needs to be checked uh, in general for the Hyperloop application, but then in particular when it comes then to the electronic components that are mounted on the uh, on the system. The next point is on the railway safety. Uh, today, there is quite a lot of uh, complex uh, regulation uh, on the safety uh, in the railway. Uh, also, a lot of authorization authorities uh, that are making uh, the safety uh, in the in the railway system one of the most expensive aspects uh, uh, of the of the railway uh, industry. So. Uh, this is really something that needs to be uh, addressed uh, in the very early stage, uh, which I think is now the moment because we are close to enter into uh, commercial uh, commercial applications of uh, of Hyperloop uh, to make sure that uh, proper hazard analysis uh, in vacuum transportation are made 
to make sure that uh, we have the hazards under control that might happen in uh, in this uh, kind of transportation medium. Uh, also because they might be different to the one or slightly different to the one that we might have outdoor with a conventional railway system. So these concepts uh, needs to be, uh, or this uh, hazard needs to be uh, uh, analyzed very carefully because then all the safety management uh, that is uh, based on the hazards uh, needs to be, needs to be uh, put in place. So this is uh, something that is uh, creating a lot of costs and making uh, uh, the, the railway business very expensive. And this is one of the aspects that uh, in the vacuum uh, transportation system, one should uh, um, take under control as quick as possible before making out of it uh, a monster. Then uh, the next one is the speed distance and positioning measurement. Uh, uh, here, uh, in order to have the reliable uh, information for the for the data recorder, uh, it is very important to have uh, uh, a reliable and precise uh, speed measurement that is able to give the right information to uh, to the data recorder in order that uh, in case of an accident, but also in case uh, of an analysis of the of the operation of the of the pods. Uh, the information is uh, is uh, uh, reliable, so it's very important uh, that uh, uh, reliable and precise uh, speed uh, sensors will be applied in order to have uh, uh, in the in a in a condition that is very different to the one that we have outside. Uh, uh, a technology that uh, helps us in that direction. Then we have the cybersecurity aspects. Uh, consider the data that we have on the data recorder, very, very uh, important and very um, valuable data. Uh, they are, as I showed before, they are connected to the ground in some cases, or at least this is something that uh, can be done. So it is extremely important that these data are secured and uh, are not uh, uh, subjected to cybersecurity attacks. Our technology today uh, is protected by cyber uh, two cyber attacks, uh, but uh, this is uh, into the technology that we have today, so into the conditions that we have today. And one of the aspects that uh, we need to uh, keep under control is, uh, and I go to the next point, is the communication layer, because today on the railway, we communicate to ground uh, uh, using GSMR or 4G, or now we start to have applications in 5G, but what is going to happen with an application with pods that are operating 1,000 kilometers per hour into a tube? So these uh, uh, communication layers needs to be investigated uh, to make sure that uh, we have uh, uh, the right technology, but also protected uh, cyber from the cybersecurity point of view, uh, in order to make sure that uh, the system is robust uh, and that the data that are on the train and also on the ground are secured by cyber attacks. And the last point uh, is something that uh, is getting is is going into the into the spot uh, uh, in the last uh, years, so also in the last couple of days uh, with uh, the uh, the last. Uh, uh, decision taken uh, in Belfast uh, is um, if we go, sorry, in Glasgow, uh, Belfast tonight, there is a football match. So in Glasgow is the decision that uh, they have taken. Um, the energy measurement uh, uh, is becoming uh, more and more important. And also this um, energy uh, information are stored into the data recorder. So it is uh, quite uh, interesting to see how we will uh, be able to, uh, to, to measure the energy consumption of uh, the system to make sure that uh, we are able to show the positive impact uh, uh, to uh, the green uh, to the green uh, strategy uh, that is getting and that is becoming more and more important uh, in the future. So these are basically the challenges that we have to check. Uh, we have to look into that, into, into when it comes to the application of uh, data recording, but not only uh, into, into, the, into the new technology, into the vacuum uh, transportation technology. Um, we are working uh, on uh, on some of these challenges. Uh, we are working in some of the challenges because we are a partner, as we said before, with the uh, Swiss Loop. Uh, so we are uh, applying uh, 
some of our technologies already into the into the pods uh, of of Swiss Loop. So we are learning a lot out of uh, the the work uh, of uh, of Swiss Loop, and uh, we see that uh, there is still a lot to do in order to apply also other technologies into this uh, this transportation system, and. Uh, what uh, I can say from my side and what I looking into the crystal ball, I'm quite uh, convinced that in the future, the juridical uh, onboard data recording will be required in the vacuum transportation systems uh, for the reason I've mentioned the last 20 minutes. Uh, crash protected memory uh, is very important and will be needed uh, in the in the pod, even if uh, the information can be sent out uh, to the ground, but the last seconds, uh, minutes, uh, or even a couple of seconds after crash needs to be recorded, and uh, this is only possible on board. Uh, the speed measurement is extremely important to make sure that we have reliable information to be stored, but also to help uh, the, uh, the operation of, uh, of the pods. The energy metering system, I'm convinced that will be required to optimize the energy consumption during the operation. And then finally, the reliable communication to ground and the processing of the data will be more, more and more important to make sure that uh, uh, we are able to take advantage of uh, the big amount of data collected to improve the, uh, the operation of the pods in this uh, uh, very interesting and uh, futuristic uh, transportation system. So I'm at the end of my presentation. Thank you very much, Diego, for the interesting talk and your presentation and sharing your experience. And um, yes, thank you so much. It was very interesting. And I think everybody really learned something new because it's such a new sec sector that basically it affects all of us, all our all our organizations were part of this seminar. So thank you very much. Um, the audience was quite active on the website, so I think we can switch right over to slido.com. I will um, I will read every question, so I will start with the first one. Um, somebody's wondering, um, would there be other data points you would collect when looking at a new transport system that is built from the ground up, something from the infrastructure? But I'm sure that uh, with the data, there is a lot of possibility that uh, are, are open. So if I look today in the application that we have on the, on the railway system, um, there is a link between uh, the information that we have on the train, like uh, speed and position and the timetable. So uh, there is a possibility to, to link uh, uh, the expected arrival time of uh, of a train uh, with uh, some uh, uh, some information that uh, one can have uh, about uh, the next uh, connection that you have so this is an application that we have currently uh, in place uh, in uh, in the conventional rail and tomorrow with the information coming from uh, nearly everywhere i mean uh, you can one can collect uh, the the information of other uh, transformation transportation systems for example and uh, and this information can be collected and connected uh, via the tool uh, uh, of board uh, to to give information to the people on board but also to the people operating the trains to uh, yes, to to increase uh, maybe the, the the frequency of uh, of the of the transport of the service or other services. I think that the sky is the limit in this case. Uh, if somebody has good ideas, uh, you can call me because we can make a, a product out of it. That sounds very interesting. Thank you. And then the next question is. Um, do you have ideas about cooling mechanism for electronics, which, in your opinion, are worth worth looking at into um, for vacuum transport? This one is a very critical one. It's a very critical one. Uh, um, because it's quite difficult to bring away the, 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 the heat uh, in a vacuum uh, in a vacuum environment. Uh, so the key is here energy consumption to bring it down the I mean to produce as little as possible uh, uh, heat and then uh, no i don't really have big ideas uh, because uh, to to go with uh, with uh, uh, forced cooling like uh, like water cooling or other medium cooling uh, you you make the things uh, very fast uh, very heavy 
uh, to go with air cooling. You don't have air in the in the vacuum. So it's uh, I think that's a the, maybe the biggest challenge that uh, that the vacuum transportation has. It uh, looks like the very small one, but it's maybe the biggest challenge that vacuum transportation has. This is fighting against physics. Yes, yes, I think we can all we can all agree on that from the Hyperloop team perspective. This is really a difficult point that needs to be investigated. Um, then somebody is wondering what are the minimum frequencies um, with which such a juridical data recorder should record? Do you use them also for vacuum transport test centers um, stations? Uh, currently, we we are starting to think about to use it uh, into 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 an hyperloop uh, uh, application. Uh, so far, this uh, our telok is a little bit too big for the for the magnitude and the weight of a pod. So it will become interesting when then we go into a one one to one size of the pod. Um, we are able to to record uh, in millisecond and bereich so it's uh, it's something that uh, we are able to 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 record it's not a big issue and we have to check we have also to to consider the fact that uh, we are not uh, uh, we are not uh, recording uh, uh, always everything but uh, we are maybe recording the deltas so we are uh, we are really event recorders uh, and not uh, simply data collector so it's also based on uh, on the, uh, the the advantage uh, to to use our technology and also the strength of our technology is uh, is into the the algorithm that we use that allows us to to go really into the detail and also into a very very high frequency all right yes okay then there is a follow up question on the cooling techniques um the question is you talked about cooling techniques what what do you think would be the most optimal method for heat transfer? Do you think carrying cryogenic gases is a good idea? Difficult. I don't think I'm in the position to, to answer. We need to be careful when uh, we try to go into this uh, exercise also, because uh, if you then start to use uh, some uh, special and strange uh, gases uh, you might enter into environmental uh, problems uh, you also need to be careful about the safety uh, due to the fact that uh, the plan is to put people in there uh, so even if it's nice to have a very low temperature on a cryogenic uh, <laughs> possible application there is also people there so it's difficult to operate at minus 250 uh, grad, uh, grad Celsius. So I, I, I don't think that I'm in the position to answer. It. But why not? I mean, I think that the one that has the right idea will make uh, some money in this case. I don't have an answer. All right, yes. Um, then the next question is about the recording unit. Um, up to which extent can such a recording unit, TSI, OPE, or CCS, be standardized for vacuum transport? We, uh, I lost you for maybe one second. Can you repeat ah, yes, that? Yes, yes, of course. Um, up to which extent can such a recording unit, TSI, OPE, CCS, be standardized for vacuum transport? Uh, today, the TELOC could be used. You could put it into the, the pod and, uh, and record. So there, we do not see at the moment uh, big uh, issues uh, in the... Uh, in the status of uh, of the development uh, that we have today, the question is to understand uh, what will be the future uh, regulations uh, that will enter in use uh, in the in the in the vacuum transportation area. Um, I do not expect revolutions compared to the ex to the existing uh, regulations, but uh, yes, there are a couple of uh, boundaries that are different. But uh, today, one can use a TELOC uh, as it is, uh, put into a, a pod uh, and, uh, and record the data. Uh, we are able to connect our TELOC to many different uh, uh, train control systems and even uh, have some train control system uh, uh, functionality in there. Yes, OK. And then somebody would like to know, have you been involved in data recording with Moglev trains? Um, 
yes, uh, we have a we have an application uh, where we data together with uh, uh, one of the maglev uh, train uh, uh, producer. But it was at uh, it was so far more on a prototype uh, phase. Also, the 600 kilometers per hour maglev of CRRC uh, is more or less a prototype. It has been presented, but it's not in operation yet. All right, I see. That sounds, sounds very interesting. Then somebody is asking, which new data points are you proposing to record for vacuum applications? <laughs> I'm not sure to be <laughs> to understand the question. <laughs> if uh, I really don't know exactly what the question is about, uh, maybe it's uh, somebody maybe. that I should hire because he knows more <laughs> than me. Uh, maybe. Maybe the person can specify or unmute he or him or herself. Or then we continue with the next question and this person can add like a more specified version of the question for later. Let's do it like this. So let's move to the next question. Um, do you see any challenges in the communication from the infrastructure structure point of view? What must what must be taken into account besides the ones for the vehicle train? Uh, the 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 big challenge is the reliability of this transportation because uh, if you are able to have a, um, a communication layer which is uh, reliable and always present, then you uh, you you open. Uh, a lot of new applications. So the reason why it's extremely important to have uh, the a crash protected memory on board, for example, is the fact that uh, you do not have a reliable communication to ground. So you still need to have the information uh, always available on the train because you are not sure that uh, you are able to send to ground uh, reliable the information. But also having uh, two sides or two direction communication that is reliable will open some uh, applications uh, in the in the in the control of your vehicle. So there is no need at the end. Uh, it, theoretically, there will be no need of a, of an onboard computer if everything is uh, controlled by by the ground. So you enter into a mode of uh, uh, ferngesteuert auto. No? But uh, this is only possible if you if you really have a reliable uh, communication, and this today is still not uh, not available. So that is, I think, the most important point. And also, okay, the 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 amount of the data, so the bandwidth uh, is also very important because this data can become uh, very big, particularly if uh, you add uh, video streams uh, or other uh, security information that you can also record on the train uh, to have a better information. And uh, all, all this needs to be then uh, transmitted to the ground. So I think that is the, the biggest uh, challenges that uh, we will have in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, um, then we have a question about the classification. Are your data recorders classified and certified as a safety device by the EU machinery directive? Um, the data recording, the juristical data recording is not a safety relevant system. So there is no hazard that is related to the juristical data recorder. Uh, but uh, what we do you know, with our uh, juristical data, sorry, with our TELOC, uh, we are also implementing some uh, safety functionality of the train. So for this part, we are uh, safety uh assessed and uh, our system is up to is able to implement functionality up to a level of uh, seal 4 for the ones that uh, know what i'm talking about but the functionality of the data recording itself or the juridical data recording it's not a safety relevant functionality okay so there is no need to no, have a safety a safety assessment for that okay Okay, then we have uh, one question left in case the other question does not pop up again. 
then so this question is is downloading of the data necessary during the ride or would also be would it be possible while stationary in the hub well, so I, that means that the data would have been to, would have been today needed to, to download it Today, the data are in some cases uh, transmitted uh, by a cable at the evening in the in the in the in the yard in some trains. Uh, in other cases, uh, they are transmitted uh, during the ride. Uh, it all depends about what you want to do with the data. Uh, so, uh, in some cases, uh, it's only an evaluation of uh, the ride. So you can. Uh, evaluate uh, how big was the energy consumption during the day or you can evaluate uh, if uh, your your speed uh, was uh, in line with uh, your expectation and so on and so on and all the data also from the train that you are recorded you take it at the at the end of the ride in the evening and then you can evaluate uh, the information uh, offline uh, to do whatever you want uh, if you have it uh, um, Constantly, if you have it uh, real time, uh, you simply can do more with that. So the real time information allows you then also to control the operation during the ride. And this is why uh, it is a sexy solution to have it uh, also during, uh, during the ride. But again, it depends on what you want to do with the data. All right, yes, that makes sense. It's very interesting. Um, yes, so apparently the other question regarding the data points uh, has not been you can send me you can send me the question the one that wants uh, yes I okay don't have the, uh, because then i can also give it to the experts in the organization that can go very deep into the detail and answer your question uh, could be that uh, i am not uh, that deep into the into the techniques uh, to give you the answer that sounds good. I will I will send you the question afterwards. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. So yes, um, so this was the end of the question round. Thank you to the audience for uh, your active participation and interesting questions. And once again, thank you very much, Diego, uh, for your input talk and sharing your experience. It was very interesting to learn about this field and for your participation to the seminar. Thank you, yeah, thank, you. thank you very thank much. Thank you very are much you, to everybody. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Just, a, thank you just very much. a little question. Are you already yeah. involved in standardization of Hyperloop? Maybe where there's questions right now, or are you working together with any companies? Like, um, I, I just remembered that there's, for example, one, um, uh, one lawyer who is involved in Hyperloop standardization in Germany right now, who is just... Um, but there, are some, work, uh, there are some work on the standard uh, committees. The, where we are involved, uh, we got, uh, we have been involved uh, as experts. Uh, there are a lot of uh, exercises at the moment, also some political games. Uh, uh, the railway industry that tries to enter and take control, uh, putting also a little bit of the mistakes done in the past uh, that we should avoid. And on the other hand, uh, also other players that uh, try to avoid these exercises uh, coming from the railway industry. So we have been addressed uh, with some questions uh, and also we are part of uh, the discussions. Uh, but uh, at the moment, uh, the, the ongoing work is uh, quite uh, political, I would say. So we need to be careful that it is not becoming a monster because the monster might uh, kill this nice uh, new uh, new technology. And uh, we need to be careful on that. Thank you. OK. So then I would say thanks a lot to everybody. Have a nice uh, continuation of the seminar. And uh, good luck to the guys in the Swiss Loop team. Thank you. And we will see each other quite soon, because I'm following you. And we will continue to work together with you and go for it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just, uh, thank you very thank much. You. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.